Hello everybody, my name is Alan, I'm from Sauber Lab and today will be another video about backups. In this video I will go and show how you can configure and use the Clonezilla and how useful is this system. Now you're gonna ask why you're gonna show this application, why it will be interesting for me. One of my colleagues, he has a server and that, that server installed OpenMediaVal and after a few years running uh, the hard drive that is installed the US started to fail and this way he wanted to migrate for one SSD for another SSD or one hard drive to an SSD and uh, he asked me Alan how can I do it without need to reinstall all my system I don't want to reconfigure all my applications and could you help me with it and I say yes it's easy and I will show you and with Cl Cloudzilla you can do it the good thing for Cloudzilla you can do either local using a external hard drive also you can do in your network so you don't need to plug anything to your computer only need to have another NAS that you can connect for it in this video specifically we're going to show how you can do local it means that you need to plug a external hard drive but in the next video we'll show how you can connect to the network and do this configuration so if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it we're going to show in this video but first of all don't forget to leave a like consider to subscribe for the channel if you're not yet and let's understand a little bit more about it before I start to explain how you can use Clonezilla we go to the basics first thing you need to have a USB or some way to connect this Clonezilla image to your computer it can be a USB or can be a CD previously a USB that is quite simple other thing that you need to know is how to boot using the USB in your computer otherwise you're not going to be able to do it and at least you need to have one extra hard drive in your system you can have a hard drive or you can have an external hard drive connect to the system otherwise they will not be able to save the data or the image in the same hard drive that you just uh, backup it so you need to have something else to record it in this video we're gonna show on local so you do need to have external hard drive or another hard drive in your computer in other video we're gonna show how to use the network so in this way you don't need to have external hard drive have this one in mind now we can jump in the computer and start to explain a little bit more about it first thing we are using Clonezilla and here in Clonezilla they say the free open source software imaging and cloning so you can make a clone for your images or only copy your images to save it as a backup so they explain a little bit features but they put really clear these only work as 86 or 64 bits processor needed to have at least 196 megabytes of run and you needed to have some way to put it so you can have a CD a hard drive PE and any other option but you need to have a way to put this clonezilla to your computer have everything in place then we can come here in download and do the download for this image once that you click in download they will open this page and in this page you can select what kind of architecture that you use normally most of the architecture will be ADM64 but if you have a really old CPU then you need to go for 86 bits they will not work at the moment ARM at least I didn't try but I do believe that will not work so you need to do another way to pick up a Raspberry Pi or ARM system. Other thing you can select as a zip or SO. I suggest you to run as SO because it's really easy to make a clone for this USB or recording a DVD or a CD. If you want to get a zip they will give all the files but then it's your responsibility to move everything the correct order to the USB. Other thing you can select the repository. Let's leave it as auto, ISO and put to the load. Once that this one is downloaded to record in USB, we're gonna use Balena Edge. Balena Edge is a really good tool and really easy to use, principally that you only select the image, select your device or your drive and flash it. Once that is flash, that's it. They will check and they will give your USB with your system. Remember, Cloudzilla is not the best to make a backup for a virtual machine, principally because here you can only clone it and it will create a backup and run and do the test that you want. This one it's more interesting for a proper computer, but I don't have a properly uh, HDMI record or 
video capture. So I need to do as a virtual machine. In my case, I have my virtual machine running here and they are running Ubuntu. So if I come here and make login, the machine that I use is this one and current is using Ubuntu. So now I want to clone it before I start to do any activity or want to make a backup for it. So what I can do? So now I can restart my computer, connect my USB and boot it using the USB. So let's do it. In my case, one that I request for boot, they give these options, I will put as a C and here's the page for Clonezilla. So if I put enter, they will start to load all the application for Clonezilla. You're gonna ask why I choose the first option because it's the easiest one and it's the best one. If you choose any other option, they will make a copy for your image in your RAM memory. What is not so interesting because they will use more RAM memory. If you have low quantum of memory, it's not interesting. If you have a lot, will run only fast. So now we can decide what language that you want. In my case, it will be English, so we'll put enter. And that's uh, if I want to keep a US keyboard or want to change, it's fine. I have a UK keyboard, but I can use as US as well. So I put enter. And now we start Clonezilla. If you see this page, you have only two options or you can enter a shell or start Clonezilla. In our case, we're gonna start it. And here we'll give a few options that you have. So first option will be device to image. What it means, they will create an image for your device. Basically, they will make a backup for you. If you go for the second option, that device device is cloning system. So if you have one hard drive and you want to move for another hard drive, you go for this option that they will copy exactly the same for the new hard drive. If for any reason you have a remote system in your network and you want to connect and make a backup for this remote system, you can go to remote source and that will do a backup. But remember, this option will clone everything or will save everything local on your computer. If you go for this option, they will save in another place. So they will copy, process and save in another place. And at least you have the options for the Clonezilla live server and that uh, these ones we're not gonna use at all. So first thing we're gonna put a uh, device image because I want to make a backup for the system. So we'll put here and now they give some options that I can use. I can use a local. This local I needed to have an external hard drive or any hard, second hard drive connected to my system. If I go for SSH, it will be a server that can connect Samba and others. In the next video will show how you use the SMB server to run it, but in this case, we're gonna put a local dev and put enter. So now they will say, if you're using a USB device, then you need to connect and wait a few seconds before you put continuous. So now let's connect my external USB drive. So we'll come here and put Sigate expansion. I connect it for my system and put enter. Now they will start process and that they will show a list of all devices that I have. In my case, I have my US with 26.8 gigabytes and I have my external USB or external hard drive with two terabytes. Once that I see the destination for my backup ends here, I can come here and put Ctrl C and that they will start to locate partition for all the computers or all the hard drives. So in this way, we'll take some minutes and they will give a list of all hard drives or all the partitions that they can use to make a backup. So let's wait. Here I have a list of all the partitions. So these two partitions are exactly the same for the Ubuntu that they create. And this one, it's where I want to save my data. So we'll select this one, put enter. Now we can, before mount this one, we can check the data or only go ahead. I suggest you to check the integrity, the system before mount, but I will skip it, check and repair the file before I mount and I put enter. Now they give the list for all the files that I have. In my case, I select OneDrive temporary, and then in this file, I can come here and put done. So this place that will save all my data, and they ask, you are sure that you want to save in this place? And I say, yes, I want, so I put enter. They will process a little bit more, try to understand what needed to be copied, and that they will say, you have two options. The first one is beginning, the second one is expert and exit. Don't need to go for expert because most of the activities that you need to do will work with beginnings unless you have a really specific case and that you know what case that you want to do, so you go to expert. Otherwise, go to default will be easy and avoid any mistake. So let's do it. Now they will ask how you want to save this image. You want to save as a save disk or a save party. If you come here, they will make an image for each separately 
parts and this one will make only one disk or one image for everything. So let's select this one to be simple for us. And you need to define the name of this image. In my case, this name is totally fine, so we'll put enter. Now they will look for any other hard drive that's connected. This reason that I told that you need to have another hard drive connected, otherwise you will not locate it. Another thing, be careful because in this stage, you need to select the correct hard drive that you want to backup. If you're not sure about it, look better, but don't uh, do a backup from the wrong one, otherwise you're not gonna have the data, basically. So now we can come here and put OK, because I have only one hard drive that I didn't use, and they give the option for extra parameters for compression. I can go for compression or use base compression. In my case, I will put this one, use base compression. If you want to save space and want a fast and a small image, this one will be the best. Otherwise, you go to the standard. In my case, you will select this standard and put OK. Now you look for the data that you're going to collect, your US hard drive. In this case, they ask the same question. If you want to check before the copy or you want only to copy. In my case, I just installed the system, so I don't need to check. So in this way, we will input enter. And now they will ask, you want to check this image after it being installed? This one is really important for you because imagine that after you finish to backup, something go wrong. If they don't check, you're gonna have a wrong data and once that you're gonna try to recover your data or your OS will have break information and will not work. So in this way, it's put yes, check the same image and put enter. Now they ask if you want to encrypt it, I don't suggest normally to encrypt, but if you have a reason to do it, yes, please encrypt. But remember, if you lose your password, it's gone. Depend how big is your password, you're not gonna be able to guess, and that um, will take ages to get the password again. So if encrypt it, save the key in a proper place, otherwise you're gonna lose it. Now I put enter. Here they will say what options or what you want to do after everything is going well. You can choose to reboot, you can enter command line, reboot or shut down. In my case, I will ask for choose and that they will give the opportunity for me to choose what I want to do. So I will put choose and put enter. Now is the time that will take long time because they will start to read all the hard drive. They will start to copy all the partitions, we will try to compress it. So you want to continue? Yes, I want to continue. And everything, all those images, SD1, SD2, they will make a copy, they will make an image, and that's it's the time that all the data is being copied. They are different for snapshot because they are doing properly copy for all the data and compress as much as they can. Once that they finish to copy all the data from your US to your external hard drive, then they will read again all this data to confirm that everything that was right is correctly. This one will take almost the same time that it took to record the first time. So they're still reading at a rate of 3 gigabytes per second and it's around 17, 18 gigabytes of data. So they will take some time. After this one's complete, we're gonna see what is the next step. So let's wait. Once that the check is complete, they will appear that the check is complete, we'll put OK, Enter, and they will finalize everything. So now you have a few options. You can power off, you can reboot, and you can do other activities. Let's put it to uh, start over. So now they will start over for the first page. Supposedly that you mess up with your system, now you want to recover this data. So you come here in your Clonezilla, device to device image, exactly the same. Where is your data? local data, enter. To recover, it's just a little bit different because you need to locate where is your original backup. So in my case, I read up here my two terabytes hard drive. So I'll put Control C. Do look for all my data or all, all the partitions that I currently have the same way that happened before. So let's wait to finish this partition. Now that uh, appear the partition, we'll select the same hard drive. And here I select the two drive that have my image. And they will say, you are sure? I put enter. The same thing, I will put beginning. And here is what changed. Previously, because they didn't have any information, you could only save disk and save part. Now, because you have more data there, you can put a uh, hey, store disk. 
hey, store part, recover SO, check restability, compression, and other things. So if you want to recover the data that originally it's installed your iOS, you can come and put restore disk. Because I put save disk, I need to use restore disk. If I use save part, I need to select save part. And we'll have a little bit more configuration, but will be almost the same. And it will happen this way. If I put hey, restore disk, it will give some minutes and will ask which disk that I want. I select exactly the disk that I want to restore. After it, it will say where you want to restore. I will say I want to restore in SDA, exactly the same hard drive as before. This option you're gonna use once that you want to use a large hard drive. Imagine that you did a backup in your hard drive of, I don't know, eight gigabytes, and that's uh, when you go to buy another hard drive, you will find a 500 gigabytes with the same price. This one that you can modify. If you wanted to create a big table for have more space, it's here. Otherwise, in my case, I have exactly the same size of hard drive. So we'll select this option and put enter. They will ask if I want to check before. Yes, I want to check, so we'll put enter. And now I will give the options what I want to do once that everything is complete. In my case, now we'll put power off and they will ask, this is hard drive, this is the information, I put yes. They review again the formatation for my hard drive, so I have all the information that I have and they will say all the data that you have will be override, so take care. Yes, I want to do it, so we'll put yes. And they ask again, you are sure that you want to do it? It's correctly the date. Yes, it's correct. And now they will start to process everything and start to, to back up my data. So in this time, they will start to, to copy all the information back to my hard drive. And that uh, I should have the same format and exactly that point that I have. This one will take some time because they are properly copying the data. If I have in a SSD, maybe it will be fast, but if I have a normal hard drive, they will take a little bit longer. So in this way, they will do partition per partition, and after this one, they will check overall to see if everything is okay. So guys, I hope that you like this video. In this video, I did only local backup, but in the next video, I want to do a network backup doing exactly the same procedure. So if you like this video and think that it was interesting, please don't forget to leave a like, consider to subscribe for the channel and see you next time. Bye.